managing emotions? Does that, is that important? Seems like it would be all discipline and hard work. Well, guess what will cause you to stay disciplined and will cause you to do the hard work is mastering your emotions. Trying to figure out the, the triggers that cause you to act or cause you to freeze. And one of the most interesting concepts, and I learned this from Tony Robbins. He and I were talking this last year um, several times about this concept. It's so interesting. And that is, what is your default emotion? In other words, when poked, when prodded, when, uh, when bored, when either stimulated or not stimulated, what emotion is your go-to emotion? Now, for some people, it's stress. Entrepreneurs, a lot, of, a lot of entrepreneurs like to go, I'm stressed out, I'm just stressed right now. That's their go-to emotion. They, they go into their mind and that is, that's what they go to um, as a default. That's their neutral. Okay, some people use worry to worry about something that might happen, worry about what somebody else might think, worry about some circumstance out of, outside of their control, worry about what's going on with their comp plan or worry about what's happening with the product or worrying about what's going on with the international expansion or worrying about decisions the team is making or the company is making or worrying about an event that's coming up or something. That's their default emotion. Some people, it's, it's uh, to fight. Their default emotion is anger. They want to fight. They're looking for an enemy all the time. That's their default emotion. Okay? So we all have a choice, and, and we all have to decide what is the default emotion that's going to serve us, and is the current one that we have the one that's serving us the most? Because if, it, if it's on the negative side, stress, frustration, doubt, worry, anger, all of those, which many entrepreneurs have, if, we, if our default is there inside of that space, it's like putting a, a limiter on our potential. When we're in that space, do you think we are attracting people to us? Or do you think are we may be pushing some people away? Are we making people want to be around us a lot? Or are we maybe only attracting other angry people or other stressed out people? that we can relate to. So there's a choice. Um, there's another range of emotions. Now that doesn't mean you can't bounce into stress, which is just fear. You, can, you, you can't bounce into anger or you know, defending somebody or, or something. You can't bounce into frustration or worry or doubt. But what's the default? Where do you go back to? What's center? What is neutral for you? And for me, it was an interesting exercise to kind of go through this. It's like, wow. Because when I was talking with Tony about it, he was saying that he has so much going on in his life that it's very easy for stress to become his default emotion. So he, he finally realized that, no, no, that's a choice. I could choose to look at something, anything part of my life and get stressed about it. But my default emotion... Could I replace that default emotion for passion, for joy, for happiness, for gratitude? Those default emotions. What if your default emotion was gratitude all the time? What if it was joy all the time? Now, you might get pushed and get stressed out for a minute, but you come back to joy. You come back to gratitude. You come back to happiness, right? You come back to passion. And there's a difference between passion and anger. If it's anger, that's going to repel a lot of people. If it's passion, it's going to attract tons of people into your life, into your world. So I want you to think about what your default emotion is. Maybe even write down, what is the emotion that you go to most when poked, when something doesn't go perfect, when something unexpected happens, when stressed what is your default emotion? Where do you go to there? Okay? And just decide that on the other side of that coin, instead of expectation and, and anxiety, it can be appreciation and gratitude. Instead of anger, it could be passion. Instead of worry and doubt, it can be joy and peace. That it's all going to be fine. So we control this. 
We might not be able to control the pain, and we talk about this at GoPro Recruiting Mastery, we're talking about this more and more. We might not be able to control physical pain or mental, emotional pain, but we can choose suffering. That's a choice. The pain might not be a choice, but the, our emotional state is a choice. The one thing that Tony told me that just knocked me down is he and I both go up on stage and we give a lot of energy and we're, you know, we're very enthusiastic, we're very energetic. And then for me, when I get off the stage, I like, I throttle back a bit, I reset my batteries. So my stage energy is not my default. It's an exception. So he told me, he said, he said, Eric, the biggest change happened in his life. He said, he said to me, uh, when, when we were doing an interview this last year, he said, Eric, the biggest change happened to me in my life this last year was I decided to take the guy that's on stage, I decided to take him home with me. And that was going to be my new default. And I went, wow, okay, that's something completely different. Think about you in your best energetic state, your, your most attractive, your most out, outgoing, your most vibrant state possible. Think about taking that person home with you. Think about that being your new normal. Think about that being kind of the, just a, every day. And the other negative stuff is just kind of here and, here and there. It just comes and it goes. But you have a different default state. Control that default state, you start to take control of your life. Hope I gave you something to think about today. It will help you, I promise. It's already helped me, helped Tony, is helping countless others that are listening to this. It can help you too. Ladies and gentlemen, my wish for you as always is that you decide to become a network marketing professional. You decide to go pro. You decide to control and own your emotions because it is a stone cold fact that we do have a better way. And if we get better, we can attract the entire world. We, let, we just have to get out there, as always, and go tell the world in a joyful, energetic, positive, passionate state. Who wouldn't want to be part of that? Everybody have an amazing day, and I'll see you soon, okay? All right. Good way to lead out, right? Good way to lead into the, into the training today. But uh, I wanted to, let's see, okay, let's go here. Yes, okay, perfect. All right, so great way to lead in today. Um, you know, a, a lot of uh, great nuggets in there. We'll talk a little bit about, you know, controlling your emotions. But before we do that, guys, um, I know a lot of you um, know that we are starting our own company. And... Um, and this, this format will change a little bit. You know, I, 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 I used to say it's a non-recruiting zone, zone and we're not going to promote any company. But when you're passionate, when you're passionate about what you're doing and uh, you, you want to share it with everybody. So uh, success zone will change um, in some aspects. Um, it'll, be, uh, it'll be an open group, but we're not going to be shy about what we're doing. So anyway, uh, Regenerate is the name of our company. Our next webinar is Sunday, November 18th. Um, we have a free enrollment, take your spot, um, <clears throat> a marketing campaign going on right now where people could lock in their spot for free um, in the genealogy. As you know, when you first get started in any company, you know, you put together your leadership, you put together um, the right visionaries, you put together the people that really, really, really want to be part of what we believe um, is going to be something special. Um, if you already have taken your spot, congratulations. I urge all of you to take all your friends and, and share this with them, get them to like this page. Um, uh, it, it does a lot for us, uh, but that's our Facebook page, Regenerate. So uh, if you want to hear a little bit more about it, um, you want to get as many people as you can on the call Sunday, November um, 18th. Um, so please, please, please uh, get this information out to as many, many people as you can. All right. So having said that and done that, um, let's get into just a little discussion today about, you know, how, how do we go out there and control our emotions? And, uh, you know, when, when, when uh, Eric Worre talks about it, you know, I was thinking about, you know, managing your emotions. And, 
I will say this, that your emotions is really what ultimately you attract. Your emotions is really ultimately what you attract. And, you know, if I'm, if I'm somebody that's, if I'm happy and I'm excited, right, I know I'm going to go out there and I'm going to be able to put that type of energy out there. But if I'm constantly in my default emotion state, right, what will I attract? And that's, that's the one thing that I really took away from that little eight-minute training. Because really, what are most people's default? It's stress, it's anxiety, it's worry, right? It's anger, it's doubt, it's frustration, right? And, and when, when you're out there, a lot of people think, well, I, I'll mask that. You can't mask it. I know myself, okay, I walk into a room, okay, and if I'm not at my best, everybody comes up to me and says, what's wrong? And I'm going, nothing, nothing's wrong. Everything's fine, everything's great. No, it's not. They see right through it. And, and what you have to do, you talk about being able to manage something. That's what you have to manage. Now, here's the question. How do you manage? How do you manage it? Well, you manage it by being confident in what you're doing. You manage it by, by having a plan. Why would I be an emotional roller coaster if I have my plan? Now, I know there's good days and there's bad days, and there's different things you can do to get you into that right frame of mind. How about this? Understanding your long-term potential in this business. Do you think that might change you? How about going to your dream board and saying, this is why I'm doing it? Right, we'll go back to your, you talk about your default emotion. How about your default why? Why am I doing this? There, there, that should change your emotion immediately. But really, it's, it's, it's when you are sold on what you're doing. When you're really sold on what you're doing, you should not be an emotional roller coaster. But if you have, if you have unrealistic expectations, if everybody know affects you and it puts you in your default emotion state, well, this is where you go from, right, rookie to professional. What does he say? My wish for you is to become a network marketing professional. That's what he's talking about. A professional does not go to his default emotions. Doesn't mean he's a robot. He knows how to manage it. He knows that it's, it's temporary. He knows where those de de default emotions come from. It comes from going back to the comfortable. It go goes back to go going back to the natural. And because that's where we're comfortable. When you go into the uncomfortable is where all the stress comes in. So when you start to really understand what you need to do, it should help you manage your default emotions. Now, here's another side to it. And the other side is this, and this is what you really gotta check. Do you go to your default emotions on purpose? Is your default, um, your, your default emotions an excuse for you being where you are in the company you're at. Uh-oh, that's a tough one, right? That's a tough one. That's one you have to really acknowledge. In other words, okay, am I always stressed? Am I always angry, right? Am I always um, doubtful? Am I always frustrated? Well, why? Why? Why do you always go there? Because maybe it's an excuse to be where you are. Follow me? In other words, it, it goes back to what I always talk about, right? If everything just isn't perfect, it's one of the landmines, right? If you're recreating the wheel, then you have an excuse on why you're not rank advancing. 
If you're always worried about what the company is doing, there's an excuse on why you are where you are. And that's another thing be, 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 between being a rookie and a professional. A professional knows exactly what they need to do to get the results they want to get. Real simple. So there are critical activities that you have to have. These critical activities will help you manage your emotions. And then you could be grateful, right? You could be that person that's energetic. I love what they said about Tony Robbins. I want to take the guy on stage home with me. That's who I want to take home. Okay, I want to take Jeff, Jeff at its best, home with me. Right? Did you ever have a great presentation? Have you ever spoken in front of a group of people and you gave it your all? That's who you have to be when no one's watching. See, when no one's watching, here's the question. What do you do? Well, most people go to their default emotions. Woe is me. This is not working. See, it's hard to keep the excitement. If it was easy, everybody would do it. It's hard, right, to go out there and always have a full funnel. I get it. It's hard to make a plan. But if you know exactly what you have to do, right, what do they say? You know, in, 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 I'm a big sports guy, right? Let's take football for an example. Okay, Vince Lombardi used to say, it makes no difference if I gave the other team Every single play we're going to run. If we execute it, they still can't stop me. It doesn't matter. Here's the play we're going to run. Here's exactly our blocking scheme. Here's exactly what we're about to do. But if those 12, if those, if those, if those 11 men execute what they're supposed to do, they can't be stopped doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they know the play. They have their game plan. And most people in this industry run it hoping it's going to happen by sponsoring one or two people, and they hope they're going to be the ones that build it for them. Well, those are the people that are emotional roller coasters. Those are the people that go back to their default emotion. But if you have your accountability of your activity, right? If you're, if you're accountable to your activity schedule, it's your schedule plan, right? Then how can you be an emotional roller coaster? Well, Jeff, if I go out there and I have my activity of accountability and I have my plan, my plan could be derailed by a no. No, it can't. Not when you expect the no. Not when, not when a no means you're one step closer to a yes. See, these are little tips on how to control your emotions. It's real simple. No, 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 no. I'm just going through my plan today. I know I have to contact X amount of people today. Remember, my job is to contact X amount of people. I am not married to the response. So since I'm not married to the response, okay, it should have no emotional control over me. So why? Because you're just going through it, right? I know I have to run the ball 25 times in order to win this game. And so I'm not worried about losing a yard here or two yards here, or if that one is 10 yards, I know I have to run the ball 25 times. Same thing. Same thing. I know this team has to put up, and we have to put up 33-point shots during this game. You think they're worried if every shot goes in? No, they know their numbers. If we shoot 30, statistically says we're going to make 34% of those. 
And if those 34% come true, we're going to hit our goal of winning the game. It's the same thing. Do you know your numbers? And so if you know your numbers, you're not married to the outcome. Every business runs it this way. Because most businesses, you don't have a 100% conversion. Most businesses base their entire business plan on 1% to 5% conversion. I'm talking about of the masses. Not of the people that walk into their store, right? That anybody, you're, you're a superstar if you're, if you're hitting two out of 10. Superstar stuff with people. So have your activity of accountability every day. Map it out. What's your plan today? It's Friday. What's your plan today? Right, okay, now you know Friday, and I showed you that we have a webinar on Sunday. I'm just talking, right, do, do, do it according to your company. Okay, what's your plan? Well, my plan is to contact X amount of people so I could get what's your goal to have on Sunday? What's the goal? Well, I want 10 people. Okay, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Let's run some percentages. How many people are you gonna contact? Well, I'm going to contact 50 people a day. Okay, that's 50 Friday, 50 Saturday, 50 Sunday before the call. That's 150. To get 10, per, 10 people on the call, what is your percentage? I don't know. Eight, 10%, you'd have 15. At 10%, so you need to have 7% of the people, of all the people you contacted, get on the call. This is how you do it. Okay, now when you get 10 people on the call, what's the conversion? Well, I will tell you. When you have a free sign up, okay, let me tell you what happened last Sunday. We had a 89% conversion from the amount of people that got on the call to the people that took their spot. Okay, what's 90% what's of 10? That's nine out of 10 people would say yes to you. Would it be worth it to contact 150 people? And I bet your numbers would be better than that, by the way. If you contact 150 people, okay, you should have no less than 30 people on the call. Well, that means you got 28 new people just got started with you. Do you see where the accountability comes in? The accountability has to come from you running your numbers. And I'm just using that as an example. It could be the same thing of people watching your video. It's just numbers. But I have to have my activity. So that controls my default emotion. That stops you from being an emotional roller, excuse me, roller coaster. So that's your scheduled plan. It's got to be everybody's scheduled plan. Because nobody has a big enough group yet, right, to take their foot off the pedal, like we talk about. So that's number one. Just know your numbers. And this way you're going, okay, I'm just going through my numbers. I know if I run these numbers, remember my analogy? Football, base basketball, I could do baseball too, whatever you want. I know if I run these numbers, I'm not going to be an emotional roller coaster because I know based on that, I'm going to get 20 to 30% of the people to at least get my information. Okay, here's the question. 25 to 30% of what number? That's what you're in control of. You're in control of the number. That's the good news and the bad news, by the way. You're in control of the number. If you only contact three, what's 25% of three? One. One. And what's 90% of one, okay? Nine. So you got nine tenths of one person get involved in your company. That's great. You got a stump. Who just got started? Well, I got this guy, he's got no arms, he's got no legs, but he got started. You, you guys understand my point? Okay, number one, number two. Okay, what do you lead with? What do you lead with? Do you have your plan on what you're going to lead with? I'm leading with opportunity. They'll learn about the products on the opportunity presentation. 
That's what I'm leading with. I'm leading with money. You might want to lead with product. It's up to you. It's your plan. I used to lead with product because that was my belief. Well, my belief right now is when what we're about to do, we're starting a company. And my default plan is if they don't accept the opportunity, maybe they'll buy my product. That's my plan. Let's help you make some money, dude. So know how to lead. In other words, you gotta have your plan. What's your belief? Maybe you've gotten tremendous results from your product. Great. Then lead with the product, but then let them know there's an opportunity attached to it. That's all I'm saying. But that's a critical activity. Know how to tell your story when you introduce it. Hey, let me tell you exactly what happened, dude. Here's what's happened. Here's where we are, right? And here's why I'm calling you. You got to have your plan. This is why when you run numbers, you get your script down. When you get a script down, man, you're unstoppable. Most of you haven't done it long enough to even have a script. Every time you talk to somebody, it's something different. It shouldn't be. The catch-up phase is different, right? Remember, because you're talking about what's new with them. But when you're getting ready to introduce what you're doing, it shouldn't be different. You should know what works. Why? Because you've done it. And when you're all over the board, it sends the message of doubt to your prospect. Have your plan. Let me tell you why I'm excited. And then have that plan on why you're excited. And this is how you know how to lead. This is where the confidence comes from. Because you know what to do. That helps you also control these emotions. You're going to be stressed out of your mind every time you do a call if you don't know what you're going to say. Of course you're stressed. I'd be stressed too. If every time I talked to somebody, I didn't know what to say or what to lead with or didn't have a plan. This is the stuff that makes you nuts. Number three, okay, get some results. Get some results. Get your first two. Get your first 10. Get your first 20. Right now, we're telling people, get your first 100. Why? It's free. Get in. I know you're going to have to put a bunch of free people in to get some conversions. This is what's going to work. But get, 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 in other words, here's number three. Get a result. Get a result. I remember when I used to get somebody just to walk into the meeting. I was excited. Forget about making money. Are you kidding? Oh my God, my guest showed, but he came 45 minutes late. It doesn't matter. He showed, but he only came for the first five minutes. You know, that was, that excited me. And then I go, okay, now I got five guests coming. And now my mindset even switched even further. How much money did I make during that meeting? See, in the beginning, you're excited to get someone to say yes. They don't even have to show up. They just have to accept the appointment. In other words, I'll be on Sunday night. You're excited. You're, oh, my God, I got somebody that's going to be on, on the call Sunday night. But eventually, that all changes. Now it's like, how many people can I get on the call? Then it's not about that. It's how many people I can get in. And then how much money am I going to make? Now you start to go, how many meetings am I going to do? Because every meeting, every opportunity is a way for me to make money. It's different. There's the difference between a pro and an amateur. A pro knows how many people he needs to make the kind of money he needs to make every month. So all I'm saying is find your excitement level. We all had to go through it. I had to go through my first person showing up, and I was so excited. 
And he didn't even do it. And I was high-fiving him. He goes, no, not for me. I was, I was still giving him a hug. Thank you for coming. Giving him a big kiss, taking him out, having a drink. And the owner pulled me aside and said, why are you buying him a drink? He said, no. I said, I don't care. He showed up. <laughs> it didn't make a difference. But then my excitement started to change. I expected to do business. Have a reading and listening library. Very important, guys. Right? To control these emotions. You wake up. Right? And you go, oh, my gosh. Yesterday came with me today. Yesterday was horrible. I'm still stressed. I'm still worried. Right? You, you, you have to control these emotions. So grab a book before you start your day. Read a chapter. Get your mindset right. Get on success zone. Get, get on with your leaders, whatever they're providing for you. Go to YouTube, listen to an Eric Worre train, something. Get it right. Get it right. Don't start your day until it's right. I love going to a, a, my go-to book, right, which is Outwitting the Devil or Think and Grow Rich. Read a chapter. I find out where those emotions are coming from, right? I can manage them. I put on a good song. Okay, or what I'll do is I'll say, you know what? It's not working out. I'll go work out. I'll go work out. I'll, I'll get it out of me. It's, 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 it's a conscious plan. This can't stay here today. We have, we have things we have to do. We have people we need to talk to. We got to be on our game. So there, that's where the reading and listening library comes into play. And then, of course, every day you got to show your plan. Every day you got to show the plan. Now, showing the plan is so much easier now. You can lead people to a recorded webinar. I'm sure you guys have, have those. Your videos, you could sit down with people. Right? If, if, you're, if, you're, if you're seasoned, you should have your own Zoom account. Right, be able to bring people up and go, here, let me show you what we're doing. Watch this information. If you're still interested, let me walk you through the plan. And our, our close is very simple now. Take a free position. And then we, we're going to drip campaign them while we work towards our launch. One thing's for sure, okay, if they're in their spot, okay, they're going to be open for the information, right? Well, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter if you're in pre-launch or whatever. You need to get good at showing the plan. Let me tell you what that does. It gets you to know what to say. Remember I said you're an emotional roller coaster. You're stressed out because every conversation is different. Well, when you show your company's plan over and over and over again, it just comes through, it just comes through, it comes through your pores. People go, oh my God, you're knowledgeable. No, I've just done this 10,000 times. You're a professional. You gotta know your plan. And when you be able, when, you, when you're confident enough to sit down with somebody and then get them started, it's over. Drop the mic. You've arrived. I've closed my first deal. Yes, you did. You did it. Now it's not about the company. It's not about it. It's about you. I'm really good. You'll start walking by the mirror, winking at yourself. Hey, man, who is that dude? Woo, I'm good. Yeah, that's what you got to get good at. You got to get to that point. How do you do it? You got to show the plan. When you show the plan, <laughs> now you go, hang on, I'm gonna bring in 12 people this month. Do you know, do you know that most people, okay, that put together any type of effort are gonna bring in 12 to 15 people if they follow the plan? Because it's their excitement level. You're working with your sponsor. You should have your number down. I'm saying to get traction, 
You should have a game plan when you finally make your commitment to do this, to put 12 people in first month, minimum, minimum. Edification, okay, these are critical activities. How do you manage your emotions, okay? Being sold on your leadership, being sold on the system, being grateful or edifying the people, edifying the company. And a lot of times that takes it off you. You never get away from edification because once again, it's chink in the armor. You know, sometimes you got people, okay, in the organization talking bad about the leadership. What do you think that message sends to your group or to the person you're talking to? I don't want to get involved in that. Sounds like a family feud to me. I don't want to be involved in that. Everybody hates everybody. As you talk about others, people know that's how you're going to talk about them. Don't you get it? These are just little clues that seep through our pores, and then we wonder why, right, no one's getting involved with us. Maybe they don't want to be on the other side of your venom. Edification is key. Edifying, number one, no chink in the armor. And then a big thing, guys, is seek counseling. Seek the mentorship. It's there for you every day. Now, when I'm saying seek counseling, okay, here's who we want to counsel. The ones that are committed to a scheduled plan. I'm not here to be your psychologist or psychiatrist, whatever the hell it is. I can't write the prescription. Most of you would be on Prozac if I could write prescriptions, okay? <laughs> but here's the deal, okay? I will mentor and spend tons of time with people I know are committed. It's called loyalty, okay? You're going to be loyal to the people who are loyal to you. That, isn't that just human nature? I'm attracted to people that are attracted to me. Well, I got to give it. I got to give it first before I could seek it. And if I know someone is committed and they're there, okay, they're going to get 100% of our efforts. They're going to be pulled in. Those are the ones you want to mentor, not the ones that are always just squeaking. And this is all, this is, you know, always a complaint. I remember the person used to call me all the time. I would just roll my eyes and go, here we go. The person would say, you don't care. I don't care because you don't care. Okay, all oh, the same stuff over and over again. But there's other people that, you know, you know, no matter what comes out of your mouth, you're going to give them your attention because you know they're committed to the activity. You know they're on the same team. Do you ever see a, a player, okay, that, that, that goes into the locker room and he has a bad attitude and that, that you got to get rid of that, that rotten apple? What, what, what was it? The, the Osmond brothers, one bad apple can spoil the whole bunch girl, okay? You ever hear that song? Am I aging myself, okay? Go play it. It's called One Bad Apple by the Osmonds. One bad apple can spoil the whole bunch, okay? Yes, it can and I'm gonna get that cancer out. So that person, I'm not gonna mentor. That person could stay in, because he's got other things he's gotta deal with. And of course, promote your tools and events. All your companies have tools, they have events, promote them. But these are the little things that will help you control those default emotions. That's what Eric Worre opened with today. How to control those. If you know that you know, then you're not an emotional roller coaster. When you don't know that you know, okay, that's when you become stressed. No, no, no. Say again. I got to contact 200 people to get 40 people on the call. Okay, so what's stressed about? Okay, how do I get 200 calls in? Go, I got to have 200 people to call first. 
So that's what you got to do. Okay, I'm just putting together that plan. And how many people can I touch through Facebook, through Twitter, through LinkedIn, through phone calls? Well, what do I need? I need what, 65 a day? I think that's close. That's 195, right? 65 a day? Well, how many hours are you going to work? Here we go. And then I'll go, okay, now here comes Sunday. I got my 40 on the call. No stress. The numbers will just pan out. And I know uh, based on that and a free sign up, I got 35 new people started. Now, tell me if you're an emotional roller coaster then. No, you're not. You're excited as hell. You're like, I'm going to do that again. Yes, you are. And this is how you do it. And then once you prove it, you teach it. And you help other people not go into this default emotions that keep people paralyzed. Appreciate all of you. Have a great weekend. For those of you that are on our journey with us, pack the house on Sunday night. Cannot wait. Okay, and uh, look forward to seeing everybody on the call Sunday and Monday on Success Zone. Thanks, guys.